Hey guys, Dennis Under Magic here, and let's talk about the FNM promos some more because uh, this is becoming a hot topic. More is developing. Wizards even felt the need to release a second press release or announcement or whatever you call it about it. I already had a video covering that, and now that I reread it because I'm just thinking, I still have questions. Well, I still don't have answers. And I think that's not this time because of a lack of communication or explaining reasoning, because they clearly said that's what they're doing. It's them hiding their actual intentions, kind of lying to us again, as they usually do. And it's all for marketing and PR reasons, so I get that. I'm not going to get all, you know, nuts about it. They can't come out and say certain things. They're just too rude or too bad or people would take them poorly or just whatever. They're not going to say we're never going to print another Fatal Push promo because we know people are going to cheat to try to get them. So then you get a bunch of inconsistent, contradictory stuff that kind of tries to lie to us or dance around the topic or kind of warp, you know, the truth. I think one or both of those is true, but let's just examine the reality of this and my theories on this. By the way, anybody notice that I'm looking at this as a whole analytically and not jumping to too many conclusions, just stating my opinions and not flying off the handle like some lunatic? And I'm pretty much the only one doing that. Everybody else is acting like wizards like broke into their house, stole their car keys, got in their car, ran it down the road, and crashed it straight into a tree. Which honestly, at this point, I could use a new car, so insurance money, that would be perfectly fine. Plus, it would make a damn good video. You know I would get some views on that. I mean, if you saw this video title, tell me you wouldn't click on this. Mark Rosewater steals Desolator Magic's car, crashes it into tree, runs off into the night. I'd click on it, and I'd be the one making the video. I don't think he'd do that. He's too nice. So, let's let the conspiracy theories come rolling in. Um, is Wizards trying to push people who are bad for the game, bad for the community, and bad for business. Those are the three parameters. Are they trying to push them away from FNM and away from the new players? Because new players don't just jump to FNM. That's the thing. The way I understand it, and Wizards keeps uh, stating things to this effect, is that you start playing with friends, casual. You go over to their house. You play at your cafeteria at your school. You get with a group of friends. You get together on some Friday night and don't go to F&M. You're just hanging playing video games and somebody's like, here, let's teach you how to play Magic. Or, hey, you got way into Settlers of Catan. And then people are like, you know what else is cool and geeky? Boom, here, have a deck. I mean, that's how I got into it. And I probably played 50 games before I ever showed up to F&M. So... It's kind of intimidating and kind of honestly a bad idea to bring somebody who's been playing for like three weeks to f and I mean, it's actually kind of disruptive. Like, I'm super chill about new people and not knowing the rules and all that stuff because I'll tell them and stuff. But like, at a certain point, I mean, it is going to disrupt the 50 minute countdown and stuff. So, I mean, the new, 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 new people are not even showing up to f and and they're just having fun and not honestly spending that much on the game anyway. So when I say new people, let's just assume I mean um, people who, and this is very typical, at least that I've seen, they say, oh, I've been playing for like three to six months or whatever, just with my friends, or I play all the time at school, and they told me I should come to this thing called FNM. You know, they're competent, experienced players, they know the rules pretty well, maybe not to a competitive level, but pretty well. Those are the people who are about to start spending more money on products and decks because FNM is, you know, more competitive and it's kind of like, uh, I'll improve this and then this and then this and my friend did this and, you know, it's kind of an arms race, except for net decking. You know, the whole, it's a puzzle to solve, I'm going to upgrade my deck. No, it's like, I'm going to go online and copy a deck, which that obviously ruined the game, totally different video. But they're new to FNM and you want them to keep showing up because it's structured play, it keeps them in the game, you know, when a new set comes out they'll buy it, whereas Kitchen Table, nobody really cares. So yes, Wizards needs new customers because there's constantly people quitting the game. They need people to replace them. So if there is anything getting in the way of regular customers, I guess you would call them new regular customers, they need to eliminate it. And I think they're seeing that because they've had in the last three years explosive crazy growth, but I have a very strong feeling, in fact, some evidence that the game is going downhill popularity-wise, attendance-wise, and even sales. I mean, it's honestly probably one of the biggest contributing factors to the EV of all the boxes in Standard right now, and the just terrible prices of Amon Cat. I think they printed it, and oh, now we've got 5% less players. And then, you know, they printed the last one. Oh, we got 5% less players. And 
5% over is enough to tank prices. I mean, any amount over is enough to tank prices. If you're over demand, it's going down. So conspiracy theory number one is, are they trying to get the tryhards that know that they can consistently win? So primarily net deckers, but maybe just exceptionally good players. So people who just in general commonly win, are they trying to get them to stop showing up to FNM? when the like four good promos i guess we'll say for exceptionally good promos that are worth a lot of money because if money's on the line they're going to play harder bring tougher decks and be you know less friendly less leeway and not be just messing around and having fun it's going to be like no no fun allowed i'm here for a purpose and that's to win this 40 dollar card so do i think they should print extremely valuable cards no absolutely not with one exception i'll get to that at the end because there is a very very easy obvious way out of this Actually, I'm probably going to forget to say it later, so don't give the promos to the winners. Give out all four of the weekly promos randomly. And I don't just mean, oh, every LGS should do this. It would be a great step because it is up to them how they give them out, technically. No, I mean WPN policy change. Hey, guess what? All of these, all four of them, every week, have to be given out randomly, not to the winners. Then show up and try as hard as you want, you tryhards. Not going to help you get it. All it's going to do is keep people from rage dropping like a baby. If you don't stay till the end, you can't win the drawing. That's at least the rule at, uh, well, everywhere I've ever played ever. So yeah, have really good promos that people want to get them in the door and then let anybody have an equal chance at getting them. I mean, what could possibly be bad about that? So that's the obvious fix for that, and that's the problem. It's such an obvious fix. Just one tiny little policy change to just tell people, hey, instead of giving th these to the winners, because the winners are probably already getting multiple packs... Hello, there's your money. You don't need to double down and give them even more money when the promo's actually worth, you know, 5, 10 plus. No, they already won enough prizes. They still technically, just by being there and existing, could win the promo. And if there's 12 people and there's four promos, that's a one in three shot. I mean, if you have four FNMs a month, you're probably going to get one. And worst case scenario, just find somebody who isn't that interested in trade for theirs. So the really, really good players will get the cards if they want them. I think that's a perfect fix, and it's so perfect, and it has to be on Wizards' radar, that I think it kind of contradicts the entire conspiracy theory that they're trying to push these hyper-competitive, no-fun-allowed, every-single-game-is-the-final-table-at-the-GP, you know, those level of players, you know who I'm talking about. Let's just call them net deckers for simplicity, because there's a bit of crossover there. Are they trying to drive them away into standard showdown leagues, PPTQs, or back into kitchen table magic with their hyper-competitive friends that also don't have fun playing the game? Maybe, maybe not. I think that they're seeing the lack of sales and the, and the, the like surveys and feedback and the horror stories of people where they're like, I showed up my first FNM and it was terrible and everybody was a dick and everybody was running overpowered decks and I played the same deck four times in a row, lost 0-4, I'm never going back. And not even just, oh, I can't win. Who the hell goes to their first FNM and thinks they're going to win? I certainly didn't. I was happy when I won my first round at FNM, hell, my first game. But if people are being jerks and you have to play against the same win on turn four infinite combo garbage that 50% or 75% of the players there are playing, you stand zero chance and you know it. Not just a low chance, but zero chance of beating that deck. You're not coming back. So... Did Wizards identify that as a problem they want to get rid of it by driving these people away by taking away their prizes because in almost every LGS the top people get the promos and thus it's those people. Plus not to mention they're handing the cards over to cheaters. So are they trying to fix that whole thing? Maybe, maybe not. I could see them getting that in their heads but like I said it's so simple. Just tell people to give away the cards randomly. It almost just makes me think that that can't be the case, but it just so sounds like something Wizards would do. Also, it's worth mentioning that some people kind of got out of their announcement article the fact that they wanted the hyper-competitive players to stop showing up to FNM. They kind of got that impression. I don't remember it being like blatantly stated, but eh, I was kind of getting that vibe a little bit myself. So I believe I mentioned a second conspiracy theory that I have about all this, but it's very, very elaborate. So I'm going to give it its own video to properly explain it. Otherwise, people are going to say, well, but what about this? And you're wrong there. And yeah, if I don't present all the evidence, it's not very convincing, is it? But it's definitely really interesting because I think you guys are going to be shocked by the pattern I found in the promos. Everybody seems to be thinking the same question. Why does Wizards keep picking such weird promos, then good ones, then bad ones, and then good ones, then bad ones? 
it's just not what you think. There's a pattern there, you just aren't seeing it. So find that subscribe button, it's the big red one if you haven't subscribed already, and click it if you don't want to miss the next video. And trust me, you don't want to miss it, it's quite good. Seriously, I already recorded the whole thing. I'll see you guys next video.